morning, everyone. Bonjour. My name is Pierre, as I said. I'm, I'm organizing this webinar live from Bordeaux uh, about marketing strategy for restaurant 2020, crisis marketing or marketing in crisis. We have a lot to say about this. First of all, I would like to thank everybody to join us. We have people from Paris. Raise the hand when you get it. Paris, London, Bordeaux, Tokyo, Phnom Penh, Ho Chi Minh, Dubai, Queenstown in Australia, New Zealand, Malaysia, Hong Kong, Morocco, uh, Bangkok, Conakry in Guinea Conakry, Africa, Seattle, Baltimore. I'm sorry, it might be quite early for you for this uh, webinar. Um, Mississauga, Mississauga in Canada, Bali, and Sydney. And uh, as my mother is joining as well, you get, might get my mother as well from Puy Normand, France. So, first of all, let me introduce myself. As mentioned, my name is uh, Pierre Guigny. I'm the, pro the proud co founder of Harry. I will talk about Harry in a few minutes. I'm data marketing expert and business strategic consultant uh, in uh, Asia and Europe, uh, around more than 40 uh, restaurants. I'm a music, food, and wine lover. Why? Because if you work in this hospitality FMB industry and you don't like music, food, and wine, you might be uh, struggling a bit. Uh, my team and I have been creating uh, Harry for the last three years, the most complete management platform for hospitality with POS, loyalty, dashboard management, CRM, marketing, booking, um, inventory, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We're also providing uh, consulting services in marketing and sales digital marketing, Salesforce optimization, business strategy, and um, have the chance when the uh, airport are open and the air, uh, airline are working, I have the chance to go every month to Hong Kong, Macau, um, China, Beijing, Shanghai, Cambodia, uh, Vietnam, Dubai, etc., etc. We call portfolio from takeaway, coffee shop, trendy restaurant, cocktail bar, nightclub, hotels, and food court which is on the other side, covering uh, most of the F&B industry from the sunset to midnight. Our tools and our clients are mostly in Southeast Asia with new development in Europe. Now you know more about me. Okay, why I have proposed to do this webinar? I have to say that I've been working in this industry for 20 years. I have the chance to be 40 now. And I realized that the more I'm working in marketing industry, the more I hear a lot of empty. And um, I, had, I have to tend I, had, I disagree with what I see most of the time on the, what I propose in terms of marketing strategy for businesses, especially from, uh, for restaurant, bar, hotels, and clubs. And uh, I decided to propose this webinar to demystify, to propose you a new approach. What we are going to do, we're going to cover uh, five five uh, part the definition yes yeah, a little bit of uh, theory is always good then we're going to talk about the myth marketing myth excuse my French if I have a, a broken accent sorry in advance then we are going to talk about the our recommendation in terms of philosophy conceptual then we're going to talk about recommendation in terms of tools advice then we're going to talk about Marketing recommendation, food for thought, kind of a happy hour, extra bonus. And then we're going to have, if I don't speak too much, we're going to have a five to 10 minutes for chatting, Qu questions and answers. As you can see here, I have Manon and Axel working with us. And you should be able to have a chat. You can send, send your message. Axel, if you can check that the chat is open and people can send questions, or we can, we're going to do a, a video questions afterward. Okay, let's start. First, a little bit of definition. Because marketing is something that is quite funny. Everybody is supposed to have his own opinion about marketing. So let's rephrase a little bit. This is going to be the most uh, ugly pages I have. I'm sorry in advance, but we have to go through that. According to the American Marketing Association, marketing is the activity set of institutions and processes for creating communicating, delivering, and exchanging offerings that are value for customer, client, partners, and society at large. I did not understand almost anything. So let's find another one. 
We found the second definition of marketing. Marketing can be defined as the analysis of the customer needs and the set of action used by organization to influence their behaviors. Okay, so we go from the customer needs and then we find product that can fit. They talk about, of course, the uh, traditional 4P, product, policy, price, placement, and advertising. But at the end of the day, I found it quite weird because in our industry, we don't go from the customer needs. When we work in, uh, in digital, we try to find a new approach. But let's continue a little bit. What is digital marketing? That can be more understandable. Digital marketing is the use of the internet, mobile devices, social media, search engines, and other channels to reach customer. So it has to be as simple as that. To reach customer through internet, mobile device, social media, search engines, and other channels. That's where I mostly uh, most spend my time. Also, definition about Restaurant. <laughs> yeah, I need it. A place where meals are prepared and served to pay paying customers. A place where meals are prepared and served to paying customers. Okay, now I'm going to propose to you a new approach because first, I don't like academical approach. I prefer to have a, a, about marketing strategy for restaurant 2020, crisis marketing or marketing in crisis. We have a lot to say about this. First of all, I would like to thank everybody to join us. We have people from Paris. Raise the hand when you get it. Paris, London, Bordeaux, Tokyo, Phnom Penh, Ho Chi Minh, Dubai, Queenstown in Australia, New Zealand, Malaysia, Hong Kong, Morocco, uh, Bangkok, Conakry in Guinea Conakry, Africa, Seattle, Baltimore. I'm sorry, it might be quite early for you for this uh, webinar. Um, Mississauga, Mississauga in Canada, Bali, and Sydney. And uh, as my mother is joining as well, you get, might get my mother as well from Puy Normand, France. So, first of all, let me introduce myself. As mentioned, my name is uh, Pierre Guigny. I'm the, pro the proud co founder of Harry. I will talk about Harry in a few minutes. I'm data marketing expert and business strategic consultant uh, in uh, Asia and Europe around more than 40 uh, restaurants. I'm a music, food, and wine lover. Why? Because if you uh, work in this hospitality F&B industry and you don't like music, food, and wine, you might be uh, struggling a bit. Uh, my team and I have been creating uh, Harry for the last three years, the most complete management platform for hospitality with POS, loyalty, dashboard management, CRM marketing, booking, um, inventory, etc., etc., etc. We're also providing uh, consulting services in marketing and sales, digital marketing, salesforce optimization, business strategy. I um, have the chance when the uh, airport are open and the air, uh, airline are working, I have the chance to go every month to Hong Kong, Macau, um, China, Beijing, Shanghai, Cambodia, uh, Vietnam, Dubai, et cetera, et cetera. We call portfolio from takeaway, coffee shop, trendy restaurant, cocktail bar, nightclub, hotels, and food court, which is on the other side, covering uh, most of the F&B industry from the sunset to midnight. Our tools and our clients are mostly in Southeast Asia with new development in Europe. Now you know more about me. Okay, why I have proposed to do this webinar? I have to say that I've been working in this industry for 20 years. I have the chance to be 40 now. And I realized that the more I'm working in marketing industry, the more I hear a lot of empty. And um, I, had, I have to tell I, I disagree with what I see most of the time on the, what are proposed in terms of marketing strategy for businesses, especially from, uh, for restaurant, bar, hotels, and clubs. And uh, I decided to propose this webinar to demystify, to propose you a new approach. What we are going to do, we're going to cover uh, five, five uh, parts. The definition, yes, yeah, a little bit of uh, theory is always good. Then we're going to talk about the myth, marketing myth. Excuse my French if I have a, a broken accent. Sorry in advance. 
Then we are going to talk about the, our recommendation in terms of philosophy, conceptual. Then we're going to talk about recommendation in terms of tools, advice. Then we're going to talk about marketing recommendation, food for thought, kind of a happy hour, extra bonus. And then we're going to have, if I don't speak too much, we're going to have a five to 10 minutes for chatting, Qu questions and answers. As you can see here, I have Manon and Axel working with us. And you should be able to have a chat. You can send, send your message. Axel, if you can check that the chat is open and people can send questions, or we can, we're going to do a, a video questions afterward. OK, let's start. First, a little bit of definition. Because marketing is something that is quite funny. Everybody is supposed to have his own opinion about marketing. So let's rephrase a little bit. This is going to be the most uh, ugly pages I have. I'm sorry in advance, but we have to go through that. According to the American Marketing Association, marketing is the activity set of institutions and processes for creating, communicating, delivering, and exchanging offerings that are value for customer, client, partners, and society at large. I did not understand almost anything. So let's find another one. We found the second definition of marketing. Marketing can be defined as the analysis of the customer needs and the set of action used by organization to influence their behaviors. OK, so we go from the customer needs, and then we find product that can fit. They talk about, of course, the uh, traditional 4P, product, policy, price, placement, and advertising. But at the end of the day, I found it quite weird because in our industry, we don't go from the customer needs when we work in, uh, in digital, we try to find a new approach. But let's continue a little bit. What is digital marketing? That can be more understandable. Digital marketing is the use of the internet, mobile devices, social media, search engines, and other channels to reach customer. So it has to be as simple as that. To reach customer through internet, mobile device, social media, search, and, uh, search engines, and other channel. That's where I mostly uh, must spend my time. Also, definition about restaurants. <laughs> yeah, I need it. A place where meals are prepared and served to pay, paying customers. A place where meals are prepared and served to paying customers. OK, now I'm going to propose to you a new approach. Because first, I don't like academical approach. I prefer to have a, a ideas that are clearly understandable and simple. What is the definition of marketing strategy for a restaurant for us? Marketing strategy for a restaurant, are you ready? It's going to be extremely complex. First, find customers. Second, bring them to the restaurant to try your food. Third, make them come back. Fourth, the most important, again and again. That's all. That's all we need to know about marketing for restaurants. Find customers. Bring them to the restaurant to try your food. Make them come back again and again. Most of the time, I see marketing strategies that are not aligned with that or are forgetting that marketing is made to develop business for the restaurant. So let's illustrate a little bit more. Okay, we start with prospect. First, there is a way to bring them to your clients, which is a step one. We're going to talk about that. Then they are in your restaurant, they're experiencing your place, step two. Then step three, you make them come back, or you incentivize them to come back. And step four, you gain happy clients. That is the most important page of my presentation today. Four steps. Let's illustrate a little bit more. There are 70 pages, so I, I recommend you to take notes, right? Because it's going to be a bit fast. Happy to have a chat after you, uh, after that with you, after one. So to understand the four step, step one, acquisition, customer acquisition. Step two, qualification. Step three, conversion. Step four, activation. We're going to talk about it now because, say, oh, yeah, that's normal. But in reality, I've launched Harry four years ago, and I've been 
working in FNB, as, as you said, as I told you initially for more 20 years, most of the time I see it at the acquisition part. So in theory, acquisition is expected time and budget is this. Qualification, conversion, activation is this. So the acquisition part is important, but if you don't qualify, then you are screwed. Then you have to wait every morning for the and pray, whoever God you have to pray, for the client to come back to your place without any possible impact. That is the theory. In reality, that's what is happening. Most of the um, marketing companies are spending time in acquisition and then some time qualification with a simple paper stamp card, printed card, or something like that. And then conversion is almost close to nothing and activation even less. So there is a real, real challenge between what is supposed to be done and what is really in, done in reality. You get it? Excellent. So I told you I've decided to propose a different approach about the marketing for restaurants. The idea on that side is to have the possibility to demystify a little bit. So before I go further, now we have almost everybody joining. Before I go further, I would like first to apologize in advance if some people are working for social media, for Google, and for all that um, major platforms, because you might not like what I'm going to say. So again, this webinar is to demystify and to propose a new approach. So my apologies in advance if I hurt some of you. There's nothing personal. It's just that our clients, our friends, our family who owns restaurants with the crisis that they have been facing for the last few months and the crisis they might face in next year, it's, it's a, it's a wake-up call to tell them, guys, you have to focus on, on your priorities if you want to survive. So let's go to the usual myth. I hope you're going to like it. First, let's go fast. Social media is key. Fails. I repeat, social media is key. Fails. Only for acquisition, fake. Only digital, dependency, and already outdated. You might ask me, why am I saying that? I repeat, social media is okay for the acquisition part. But then for the rest of the activations, most of the time it's fake. It's only digital, so you lose the experience with your clients. You have a high dependency on the platform you're using. And I will show you that it's already outdated. So let's have a look. Fails. Why? OK. We know that the digital store pays print, the second largest advertising medium. And that thing is not the second anymore. It's the first. The biggest advertising company in the world today is Alphabet from Google. And the second one is Facebook. So for acquisition, I would say, why not? But after that, for activation, follow-up, and spending, it's fake. When you talk about the stat about social media marketing for restaurants, you find 109 million results. And most of the time, it's paid by these companies. So they try to convince you that social media is key for restaurants. I would try to convince you the opposite. Of course, I might get some enemies, but that's fine. For the benefit of my friends, clients, and family who own the restaurants, I can take the risk. When, when my friends are buying, uh, are pushing the, the post on internet, sorry, on Facebook, they can face what we call like farms. So these are, that's why you have never realized that when you're pushing your, your New Year's Eve uh, party on Facebook, you're selecting, uh, for example, your target audience, men and women, 25 to 35 in my city, and you find uh, 200, 300, 400, 500 likes. But at the end of the day, when you look at the profiles, none of them are from your, your, your city, and they are more likely to be people that have been incentivized to like for a few, peanut, for a few uh, uh, peanuts uh, um, alike. So for me, we have a challenge on that. Second, Facebook fake accounts. Um, last time, they have been blocking 1.7 billion fake accounts in Q1. So January, February, and March, Facebook had been blocking 1.7 billion fake accounts. So I don't trust this system. Third, it's already outdated. Let's talk about the millennials. 
Millennials are the biggest, the biggest target audience. They are 20 to, to 35. They will be the most active uh, and the biggest, uh, sorry, active group on earth. And they will be the one who will be coming to your restaurant, your bars, and your clubs. And this guy, I live in Facebook. My son, who is 18, is telling me that he's, he's going to Facebook only to check uh, his mom's photo. That's all. And at the same time, Facebook is the biggest advertising platform on earth. So I think there's an issue. Let's move forward to the second. Instagrammers and influencers are important. Sorry. I know I have some acquaintances in my LinkedIn and my networking uh, network in Hong Kong who are Instagrammers and influencers. They are doing a good job as long as they don't get paid. So Instagrammers and influencers are not important for marketing in restaurants. First, they have one of the biggest fake number of followers as well. The ladies that we know, for example, Kim Kardashian and so on, who, has, who, who mentioned that they have around 20 to 30 million followers, well, we have been realizing that 45% minimum of them are fake. Tomorrow, we can, you can get 100,000 followers on your Instagram account. You can pay them. It's cheap, but it's fake. Waste of time. It's risky because you, you may have at faced um, very, very bad review from Instagram or influencer of your favorite restaurant. They're damaging your reputation. Then you cannot control anything about what they do. And third, there's no return on investment. ROI. It's the key word today. Return on investment. Today, we're going to talk about marketing for business, as I told you. It's not branding. Okay, it's cool to have people following your Instagram or your Facebook page. That's fine. Again, I don't judge. But me, I'm paid for the restaurant and bars and clubs and hotels to help them to grow their business, to, put, to bring people to the restaurant and make them come back. So that's why for me, this is not a priority. Waste of money. Oh, you see the nice, uh, the nice uh, visual done? Thank you. Inspirational. Example of that um, amazing uh, uh, blogger in uh, uh, England who has been uh, contacting a hotel restaurant to get traffic. She was saying that she had 81,000 followers and she wanted for free accommodation. And that's the first time this, this uh, bar of the White Moose Cafe and Hotel has been deciding to public, publicly reply and, uh, and show that finally it's shocking. I don't want to read that. It's, it's a little bit rude. But it has been in the, in the media in uh, London, and you can find it easily on the internet. Quite interesting. Also, second myth, a website for my restaurant is not my business priority. You might not get it in Hong Kong. You might not get it in Dubai. But in many, many countries, and I've seen that in France, the, hot, the restaurant and bars are using, sometimes they even don't have websites. They use a Facebook page. Sometimes they have website, but just for contact and the PDF menu, and that's it. That's sad. That's sad because website for the restaurant is a business priority. First, it brings digi digital visibility. If you are in this, one of these cities that I've been mentioning, in Dubai, Ho Chi Minh, Tokyo, Bali, Sydney, Baltimore, all of you are following me today, it's important because people will look for you through Google. And if your, your website is not well updated and structured, you won't be visible. It's not only for menu and contact. You can do much more with the, with the restaurant uh, website. Look for Umanota in Hong Kong, one of our great partners. So look how they works. Great example of what you could be doing. And it's your first window to the world for your venue. So it's crucial. A website is a business priority. OK, you might tell me that you don't have budget. That's fine. You go to Squarespace or Wix, and you pay uh, 20 US dollars per month, and you have your website done by you, and somebody who can just do drag and drop. So it's not a question of budget anymore. It's a question of mindset. Let's keep going. Loyalty program makes my venue looks cheap. How many times I have heard that, that loyalty program. Loyalty program is not about discounts. It's about creating, creating relation, qualifying the client, personalizing the attention, rewarding them. It's the first and only customer acquisition tool today. If you don't have a loyalty program, people come in your place, eat, and go. And you might tell me, OK, sometimes I hear some people saying, yeah, but I know my client. Yeah, you might know Bobby. Or, oh, by the way, hello, Bobby from, uh, from uh, uh, Bangkok. Thank you for joining us. Um, you might hear, you know Bobby, or you know me, etc. of course, because we talk with you. But we represent 0.05% of your clientele. So the only, play, the only way to, get to know your client and qualify them 
is uh, to have a loyalty program. Second, it's a way to reward your guests. No matter how rich or, uh, can be the guest, they love to get something for their relation. Sometimes a free drinks, sometimes a, a little uh, extra dish, sometimes whatever that can make them look special. That's the base of your relation. And I didn't invent that. Since the bar has been, uh, have been created, the, the round of drink uh, of, the, of the owner has been part of it. That's the same. Loyalty program makes your venue look cheap. That's wrong. And it's the, for me, it's even the most important marketing platform you can have today. Let's keep going. Another myth. I can use free marketing tools. Yes. Don't try to think that I'm trying to sell my product because you have to pay for my product. That's not the case. The free digital marketing tools in 2020. Sorry, the, it's a little bit pixelized, but you get the idea. That's false. When it's free, you are not the client. You are the product. So everyone who is coming to you saying that the, the, the tool is free, be careful. It's not free. There's nothing free in this world. So just to repeat this important idea, allow me to illustrate differently. When it's free, you are not the client. You are the product, like a pigeon. Yeah, I'm sorry. So starting from now, it's important that you don't use free products unless you know the price you have to pay, which is giving your data to somebody else or allowing uh, not to be in control of your marketing. Let's keep going for one or two more. I've heard that so many times because we are developing CRM and we're giving CRM and we're developing CRM for a restaurant. And every time I start with a new client, they say, oh, I have a marketing database from a friend. Or I can buy a marketing database and use it. My goodness. No, 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 no. It's useless and even more, it's dangerous for your brand reputation. And in some of your countries you're working, especially in Europe, it's forbidden. You have to take time to build your own database. Even though you start with five people at the beginning, it's the only way you can succeed. Okay, let's keep going. After it's going to be more fun, don't worry. Huh? We, I'm just putting the, the structure in place to make sure you understand where I'm going. And at the end, if you disagree with one of these, you might find the rest of the presentation a bit painful. And you are allowed to leave if you don't feel comfortable with what I'm saying. Another one, let's make it fun. Bad reviews are made by idiots. In a way, sometimes I have to say, yes. Example of this person who had been ordering a waffle, found a fingernail on her food, and she had to wait one hour to get a fresh one. She get a refund. And the restaurant is not yet open. Come on, guys, what's going on with you? Another one. It was some of the best Italian food I've had, and I told her I'm going to post about it on Instagram when I have about 10,000 followers, 11,000 followers. But when the check came, it was literally no discount at all. And she, she gave one star. Come on. That's shocking. The last one. Old Spice, a guy doing, going to a, a Taco Bell. Why is that fire sauce isn't made with real fire? Seems like false advertising. Creative response for Taco Bell. Old Spice, is your deodorant made with really uh, whole spices? Okay. Ah, sorry, let's keep going. So it's, you have the possibility for you to share publicly your part of the difficult experience with the clients. When I'm going to TripAdvisor, if I'm checking a bad review, I'm expecting a reply from the, from the management. And I'm expecting either to apologize because it happened. Things can happen, of course. Uh, we are in real world or to have the version of the, of the manager. And if the manager reply in a bold way or uh, in an honest and a frank way, I love it. It makes me want to come even more, even more to this place. But also, they are not only made by idiot guys. It's an opportunity to transform an unhappy client to a lifetime ambassador. OK, I didn't find the right visual to illustrate that, but you get it. Sometimes people are complaining not just because they are idiots, it's because they had a bad experience from your waiter, from your staff that you, uh, you fired the week after, for whatever reason. And it's, it's good because if they take time to complain and they take time to follow up, that's going to be amazing. 
for yes and no. I don't need more marketing. I'm already busy. Okay, this part was available and was possible until March. But since March, it's not anymore too much the case. Yes, of course, on Saturday night, you are packed, of course. And no, because on a Tuesday evening, you are empty. Or you might say, I'm full on the evening. Fine, lunch, you are empty. Or morning, you are empty. Or blah, blah, blah. Don't wait for your business to drop, to start to think about marketing and qualify your clients. It's truly, truly important. More for fun, external platforms are giving me visibility and tracking. Okay, you might see later, I'm going to talk more about external platforms that we all know. So yes, external platforms such as booking platforms, they can reach customers outside your network. I'll give you a little bit example. Food Panda, Just Eat, Uber Eats, Zomato, and FoodZozo.com. Of course, they can do delivery. La Fourchette in France, Open Table in US, Chop in Hong Kong that I, I, love, I love personally. But at the same time, for what I've seen in Hong Kong, 95% of the booking traffic of my clients, so my client had one of these widgets and everything, I, I have signed with them because I'm bringing me traffic. 95% was coming from their own website of my clients. So what I've seen from the behind the scene is that quite regularly, this, these companies are great, but they are getting your data and growing on your, on your back, which means that for me, it's clearly a challenge. We're going to talk about that later on. And uh, sorry for my friends who are working in these companies, guys. No, don't take it personal at, at all. I'm uh, following the interest of the restaurants. Okay, now that we have been putting in place the the structure and the base, we can talk about more positive things. Marketing and restaurant today. Remember that the best marketing is that, a great meal, enjoyed, a great meal. So now, it's, sometimes it's gonna be a bit simplified. You might find that a bit empty if you have been a marketing expert for 30 years with a, a two MBA. My presentation might look a bit dry. But if you are operator, working with your company, having one, two, three, four restaurants and no time to think too much on the marketing strategy, take it as it is, take your note. I hope you will get an interesting part from what I will uh, present to you today. So first, let's remember, like Elon Musk said on Tesla, the product is the marketing. I'm coming to a place for this. It's all about emotion and taste. It's all about ingredients and flavors. It's all about experience. This is my favorite octopus dish on earth. It's at Umanota in Hong Kong on Peel Street. I love these guys. You might think, you might see that I illustrate them quite regularly because I love what they do, Meraki Group. I'm, I'm traveling every month to uh, Middle East and Asia. Uh, I do Dubai, China, Hong Kong, Macau, Ho Chi Minh, Cambodia, and I, go back, I fly back to Bordeaux. I'm organizing my business trip to make sure I don't miss my Caipirinha time at Umanota on Peel Street on a Friday evening. You can find me there because it's the most amazing experience I have. And they are the best marketing. You get also another friend uh, from, from um, Pirata Group, Manuel Palacio. Hello, Manuel, if you see me. This is my favorite pasta. It's a peachy on, on, in Hong Kong. It's a, a truffle pasta dish. It's amazing. I take two. That is the most important marketing. That's not the only one, but first come first, the product is the marketing. And to finish with those who have been to France and to Bordeaux especially, a candy. Look at the texture and the beauty of this candy. If you have never experienced that, it will look a bit weird. But if you have tried already, you might, realize, you might remember the taste in your mouth about that amazing thing. So the product is the marketing. Second, Customer are key. Yeah, you, you will tell me, of course, Pierre, customer are key. Yeah, but if I see the budget and the time spent by your marketing team for outside your place and that you, and you don't know your customer, there's a problem. Customer are key. You have to know them and take care as if they were your friends or family. Whoa, that's a bit weird. It doesn't work. Okay, 
These guys, these are real photos from clients. I repeat, these are real photos. They are more beautiful than the, 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 the fake one. These are your key. You have to take care of them. But having said that, take care of them means also finding ways to qualify them, get the information, get the history, get the habits, get the, the, the preferences, all that. It's not just about saying, oh, yeah, yeah, we care of the customer. No, it's crucial. Then, today, the current business tools are too expensive and disconnected. Sorry, I may have made the typo on my expensive, but I'm sure you will get it. That is the current customer journey that are proposed in the industry. On the CRM, use with Marketo or HubSpot. On EDM campaign, 50% of you use MailChimp. Then you have your client. Then the client go uh, call to action to go to bookings. They have to use Chop, Open Table, Quandu, or Ticket Lab if it's a if it's a event. Like in French, it's a, a Wiz event. Then there are oh, oh, seven room. Then for table management, seven room is here. The, or rest pack. For the oldies, you talk about rest pack. For the new one who has been investing recently, seven rooms. Then you have POSs, micros for the oldies, Revel, Ofan, GiveX, Bindo, etc., etc. Payment gateway, you know them. And then you have loyalty system. First, they are, most of them are disconnected. Second, they are expensive. We need to have a POS and seven rooms, for example. It's, it's roughly, it's not an official one. Guys, don't, don't be too, too mad about me, seven room, but it's between 700 to 1.5 thousand Hong Kong uh, US dollar a month to get a package with a POS and table management. So either it's disconnected or it's expensive and disconnected. And that's a big challenge because as I told you initially, if you want to take care of your client, you have to know them. You have to know the customer journey. This is the customer journey of your client. Online, contacting them by email or whatever, then make them go to your website to book, then to your venue, then to pay, and then to, to uh, qualify them with the loyalty. So today, the, the, the business tools are either too expensive or disconnected. We can have a, a chat after that if you want about this also. Yes, yes. Okay, that's my little hook. Yes, yes. Let's keep going. I've been visiting, working, collaborating with around more than 100 uh, FNB groups myself in the last four years. These are meetings, prospections, dis uh, discovery phase, everything. And what I've seen is surprising. The current marketing team are understaffed. So for FNB groups, it's not, um, uh, it's not, sorry, it's usual that we see less than two marketing staff for most of the FNB group in Asia. This group can be 50, 100, 200, 500 people, and sometimes one marketing, 1.5 or two maximum. And that's the challenge. And of also, they are focusing on social media and promotional. So in order to give you ideas about what is marketing, you might say, okay, Pia, I know. Yes, we all know. But sometimes we tend to forget about the skill required to run a proper marketing strategy nowadays. So this is the, the circle of the different skills and the different expertise we need. Content creation, digital platform development, customer activation, promotional marketing, data analytics, strategic management, community management, social media management. I, I, I could go endless to that. This is what it needed today to run a proper marketing. And what I've seen is 95% of the restaurant marketing team have only these two skills most of the time. And a little bit of PR. The rest is forgotten. So you may have a struggle soon. And that is an issue. Let's be more creative now. Again, chapter one was the difficult, my difficult job to demystify a little bit about marketing and digital marketing. The second one was to put a statement. Then the idea is to give you tips and best practice and suggestion. I know you have one hour with me and I want to make sure you get the best of what I can share with you and you can use it starting after that hour of meeting together. So first, as we said, your client. How can you take care, follow up and manage your clients? Client doesn't mean only in your venue. It means also in your uh, outside the venue, in, in a discussion with them. 
in interaction, email, follow-up, etc., etc. Then your community. And of course, never the opposite. Today, as I've shown you, I've shown you before statistically, your marketing team, not your, but the marketing team in restaurant industry spend more time in social media, Facebook, post, Instagram, etc., that taking care of their clients. Sometimes they even don't know we are coming in their places. And that's for me the first mistake. Second, it's going to be a bit itchy. I'm sorry. Permission marketing philosophy. Yes, you might tell me, Pierre, you work in digital, you work in CRM, and you start now to sell us, to evangelize about permission marketing. Uh, yes, it's a statement. I personally believe in permission marketing. The data that your customers are happy to share with you for mutual interest. If you, you scrap the data from the free Wi-Fi access or from a, a crap um, a game, online game to win a, a Porsche or, or a luxury car, etc., that is very, very bad. You need to find a way and to build the platform, the tools, the communication, the process to motivate and stimulate your clients to be inclined to register and to share their the loyalty card at the time. To know more, a bit more about that, permission marketing, you, most of you might know him, but I need to quote him, was uh, uh, first, one of the first one who talked about that was Seth Godin. Permission marketing turns strangers into friends and friends into loyal customers. That's how we work. This book changed my life 20 years ago. I went to a, a Mola bookshop, which is the biggest independent bookshop of friends in Bordeaux, amazing one, and my mother offered me that. And in this, Seth Godin explained that there has to be a mutual relation. Everything you're doing has to be for the benefit of both. I hate those who are collecting your data for their interest. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more. Permission marketing is key. Example, we have been doing a newsletter about COVID edition during the difficult time of my client for the last three months. Instead of blasting all our database, which should be annoying for those who are not interested, we suggested for people to register. We only had less few hundreds about, because we have a big database, but we only have a few hundreds who registered, and that's fine. We focused on these guys, and we have been feeding them with articles, information, news, reports about what was happening. So at the end, we had 43.75% of open rate and 7.5% of click rate. 45% of open rate for a newsletter is massive. I'm not showing off with my numbers. I'm just illustrating to you that with a proper permission marketing, this is where you get most of, of your marketing activity and the, and the fantastic results. Then, in terms of philosophy, we tend to get a sincere story. Sincere and authentic story. These three photos are not photos from uh, whatever um, uh, photo library online. This couple has been building iBot, one of the most important electronic clubbing and, uh, and live and cultural place in France, in Bordeaux, on the, on the boat. The, uh, the couple, husband and wife. These guys have been building Meraki Group from Umanota, Laura and Alexi, brother and sisters. It's a family project. These guys, it's a true friendship project, which are Marie, Jérôme and Aurélien from La Rotisserie in Hong Kong. They are telling an authentic story, and this is where you should be doing in your philosophy. Find your story and share with... Not everybody might be interested in, but those who are be interested in will follow you. Also, uh, this is where we're going to have, again, some trouble with my friends from a uh, from, uh, uh, startup industry. Don't let anyone do your job at your place. Booking, ordering, customer relation, deliveries, loyalty management, as much as you can, of course. I know you are busy, guys, with, by run, uh, running your business. But if you leave your booking to somebody else, to a booking platform, they take your data and they are in control of your marketing. Ordering. Today, you have tools. We have been developing for Hong Kong, for example, an uh, app for them that they can manage their own menu and customer can order and pay online. We don't take care. We don't manage the data. Sorry, we don't steal the data. We don't use for our benefit. It's for them. And you do it yourself. Customer relation. Uh, an email, a follow-up can be done by you. Deliveries. Okay, you might tell me that it's very easy to have to use these these uh, these usual players. Of course, 
But if you start to look really, if you had your own delivery platform on your own website, you might be inclined to get 60 or 70 percent of the volume of deliveries because it's from your neighborhood. We talk about uh, Umanota after the, the the COVID, they decide to take care of their own delivery as much as they could. So, like the pizzeria are doing for the last 60 years in the world, they have their own team to go from their restaurant to the to the places to deliver the food. You save 30 percent and you are in charge of your database and you don't get your data used to promote your competitor. And loyalty ma management, of course, you can be motivated to uh, to get a free loyalty system from somebody else. But this guy will again get your data and promote your place. Uh, sorry, promote your competitor. So for me, as much as you can, don't let anyone do your job at your place. Sorry, guys. One more. When I talk with clients, they always said, oh, I just have a 100 contact database. I want more and more fast. I can buy. No, 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 no. Let's go back. There's no elevator to success. A marketing strategy, a customer database, and a customer trust takes time. Of course, today we are in the Hollywood stories about he launched his company and three years after they wait 5 billion US dollars or they are in 40 countries. No, find your speed one step after the other. No shortcut. Shortcut uh, brings to failure. Mutual virtuous relationship with your client. Hold on, cutting there. Yes, it has to be mutual. Don't try to find hooks or tricks to squeeze your client a little bit more. Oh yes, the burger is served only with the burger and the fries, you have to pay extra bucks for the fries. Okay, if it's a decision, it's a decision, it's an example. Or sometimes you have to access to this and you have the, uh, the top up or the add on, the top up ingredient is it costs seven times what it should be. No, it has to be a virtuous relationship. You might tell me, Pierre, I don't do business and we should find a way to make money. But yes, but if your clients are happy, they will come back. Small is the new big. That was the advertising of uh, the coccinelle uh, for Volkswagen in the in the 70s, in the time where everybody was providing big cars, big engine, big wheels, etc. They launched a new car, efficient, beautiful, small. Why small is the new big? Don't try to think too big, because in the small structure, your own uh, uh, bakery, your own handmade burger place, your own mixologist bar, etc. You can have focus, you can have closer relation with your clients, flexibility, authenticity, innovation. Don't need to think uh, billions of dollars. And in marketing, is the same. Maybe one day you're going to be billion dollars because people will love the DNA of your brand and you can extend or expand. But today, that's what I would suggest. Take care of all your customers. We talked about that before, about the review, online review. In terms of philosophy, every review needs to be followed. Every. The idiot, the smart, the nice, even the nice. When they say, oh, it, I had an amazing dinner at your place, I always see, thank you very much, that's enjoyable. Yeah, try to be creative. Try to take care of them, follow, interact, make them. There's nothing more that I like on my side, and I'm sure you might be. I, I, I use Instagram also for my personal life. And I love when I'm going to a place and I and I uh, show that I was there to have either a little comment from this fantastic place or brand or comment from the the, the restaurant manager or the, the this person who start to follow me. I love it. It's amazing. Showcase your partners, suppliers, staff, and more. These are examples again. Here we have classic fine foods. With, with my partner, sorry, partner means my great, great client for a few years. They are showcasing what they do. It's not, it's not uh, uh, empty, it's real, authentic what they're providing. Showcasing your staff, who they are, where they're coming from. Here on our side, we have been show showcasing our new joiner for four years already. No matter they are interns or seniors or whatever, showcase them. We coming, it's a people's business. You're coming for a place because you know the bartender. You're going to the place because you, you heard about the DJ who is good or, or because the waiter is pretty. 
or the food is fantastic. Oh, by the way, I paid this burrata a little bit more expensive, but I know that the burrata is coming from this producer in Italy, etc., etc. Show your partners that deep sense. I uh, yes, use the startup mode. Who are these guys? Oh, hold on, going back. Who are these guys? These guys are your new competitors. Jeff Bezos, who is uh, starting a um, delivery system, Deliveroo guys, Bernard Arnault, who is uh, investing now, uh, number one luxury brand, luxury company in the world, is investing themselves in restaurant industry. So this guy coming with different business model, different business potential and, uh, and resources and disruptive approach. So on your side in marketing, you have to rethink about that against this guy because they are breaking the rules and are coming with a aggressive competition. Missing here another one here, which is the one I sh showcase all the time, which is the photo of Spice, where is the uh, MIT student um, um, restaurant developed without chef. So they are putting robots in the in the kitchens. You might love today, but that's where they're going, and I, I guess there might be some disruption soon. So the startup approach mode is key. You want to know more about startup? You go online, you search startup philosophy, and try to use this mindset for your restaurant. That might be a bit struggle at the beginning, but it might happen after. Okay, tools, quickly. We still have 15 minutes to go. First, your customer data are your data. Data, if you want. There's nothing more than I hate when I see this. This, for me, is devil. Your customer data are your data. Find ways to use tools that are keeping the data for you not feeding somebody else. Second tool, start to think live data. Find ways to have the most live data in order to be proactive. Today, 90% of the, of the groups that I've, I've been seeing, they wait for a manual consolidation at the end of the month, then three days from the finance or account, uh, accounting managers to consider the data, and they have a vision of their business uh, on the fifth of the following month. So sometimes it's 40, 40 days after the beginning. It's too late. Find tools that can provide you live data. Of course, loyalty, 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 loyalty. Hold on. Oh, loyalty, loyalty, loyalty. Clearly, it's key for you. Find ways to develop loyalty system. Every contact matters. Every business card, every person you have met somewhere, every activation, Every contact for bookings, every contact matters. They have been in contact with your brand. You have to find a way to track and activate them. Focus on multi-channel or omni-channel approach, which is a customer-centric. Everything that you are doing has to be done from the customer point of view. How can he access to the information? How can we simplify his life? How can we follow up with him um, and make him look personalized? How can we take care of him? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Instead of thinking, Website is for website. Uh, reception uh, at the, my restaurant is for is for, for walk-in, et cetera, et cetera. No, everything has to be around the client and the client becoming top priority. You might tell me, yes, Pierre, we're doing that already for a few, uh, few months, few years, a few uh, decades. I would say yes, but stat statistically, I've been realizing that it's a yes, but it's not that frequent. Also, permission marketing versus data stealing. Opt-in. Allow your client to say, yes, I want to hear about you, or no, I don't want to hear about you. If they don't want, don't push them. Focus on those who want to hear about you. That's where the, the value is. Marketing tool, digitalized relation. So often yeah, today, I realize that on when you search on Google, you have not the information. This one is a great example. There's everything. Here, there is everything as well. Make sure that people can see you, can contact you. You have the website, you have the opening hours, you have the uh, contact of the reception or the online booking. You have all the information that you need because people want to be able to see and hear about you anytime they want and get the information. And it's still not the majority of what we have been seeing uh, in the market. Website, Google update, menu update. Yes, I create menu because if I want I see a dish on your on your menu online, and I'm going for that. I'm expecting to see that dish in your restaurant. I, 
it happened one day that I had an amazing burger and I arrived to the restaurant. They said, no, sorry, during public holidays, we only serve pizza. Say, my goodness, I came only for the burger and I don't want pizza today. Disappointment. Online reservation, online on ordering. Digitalize the relation and personalize it. Going. That's an example. Restaurant strategy. I repeat, most of the time, it's Facebook and Instagram. Result, zero. Peanuts, nothing. Cacahuete, empty. 92% of the restaurant today, based on our statistic and our expertise of the market. What you should be doing is full website, great content, and qualified newsletters, because that's the only way you can have a ROI. My 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 daughter, nine years old daughter, this morning asked me, "Daddy, what is ROI? Return on investment? I invest one dollar. How much do I make from that one dollar invested?" I said, "I get it. That's important. Yes, darling, it's important. It's crucial today. So today, Google is ROI. That's a, a joke as well for those who are speaking French. Google is roi. Roi means king in French. So roi and ROI kind of funny. Okay, sorry." So Google is king, not Google, visibility on Google, unfortunately. And to make it happen, full website, content, and actions and interactions. Next one, current social network are temporary. Last time I said outdated. Today, the most popular network for teens, those who are born between 79, uh, 97 and 206 is in Snapchat in 2019 the most popular network for generation x those like me and some of you who are born between 75 and 80. but these guys today is the biggest advertising platform but it's outdated already because the target audience is not us anymore the target audience is in between is the millennials 20 to 35 because that's the biggest active market potential on earth so if you spend most of your budget on Facebook, you might reach people like me. There might be other ways to reach me. And that is 19. We don't know what's going to be the most popular network in 2020. So use them, but wisely, smartly, and take care of your website. The website is the most important. Website last. Social, me social media, no. Who from you still have um, a MySpace account, nobody. So clearly, it lasts. Website is your legacy. You're okay, we say in digital. Yes, your domain name, your blog, your menu, your reservation system, your loyalty program registration, everything. It's your website, and it's easy again. The website today is cheap. Wings or Squarespace. I don't get any uh, benefits by mentioning these words today. Yeah, you go. In one hour, you have your website done and you start and you take the lead. It's your domain and you do whatever you want. You don't rely on any of the, of the, of the third part. In terms of tools, let's go in. To recap, you can do a screenshot of that. Digital marketing tool for 2020. The minimum is EDM, platform, uh, EDM management platform, a website, a contact database, and an updated Google profile for your restaurant. That's the minimum. The real plus, the must, the should have, is your own online booking, a CRM system, a loyalty system, and an online ordering. That is where you start to make business, really, and control of your destiny. An example, and that's why my team and I has been working four years like hell to build this. It's not that I'm trying to sell this. I've been building this system to be able to encapsulate and integrate the whole customer journey from the CRM, online booking uh, widget, POS, inventory, data management, payment gateway, loyalty, etc. If you want to hear more about Harry, you contact me at the end of the presentation. But it's, it's clearly to show you that this idea with or without us has to be thought by you. If you're investing in system, it has to to match and has to be linked around the customer journey about, or to say the omni-channel customer focus. Okay, we are about to finish our webinar soon. Marketing recommendation, food for thought. I love that expression. It's happy hour time, guys. Extra bonus. Quickly, be generous. 
Okay, you might think that I try to be a little bit uh, uh, cheesy with my photo, but you know what? I take responsibility. Be generous means if you do a loyalty program, don't say, okay, I'm going to do 2% discount on the coffee in the evening, so then I don't, I don't spend too much and I grab the... No, 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 no. If you do a loyalty program or if you give, you give for real. If you offer a drink when people subscribe to the loyalty program, it has to be whatever drink they want, not the cheap, uh, 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 the cheap cocktail made with water and ice. No, 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 no. Give a full experience of, of your cocktail menu. The second one, don't believe the hype. That reminds me of a public enemy song from the 90s. Trendy for some already has been for others. Today we talk about TikTok. Today we talk about a, a, a lot of new uh, social media platforms. They, they are cool from some fashion brand online doing e-shop. Why not? But for restaurant industry, focus on your clients. The good part is whatever happening in technology in the future, the key is the clients. Reward your loyal clients. Sorry, there's a typo here. We take it out. <laughs> Reward your loyalty clients. I come, I want to be rewarded. But reward them according to their behavior. It's a meritocracy. From the first visitor to the big spender. Most of the time I hear big spender, I know my key clients, etc. Yes, they are good, but they are at the top of the pyramid. And only few. The rest are ignored. The, the guy who's coming every weekend to your bar to buy one or two beer and a little bit of uh, 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 fish and chips has to be rewarded, has to be taken care of. And of course, you cannot offer the same to the, to the beer guy and the same to the Dom Perignon guy, but they need to be rewarded according to their behaviors. To finish, no, still yes. Be consistent, be consistent, be consistent. Product. Service, product, don't try to play the, 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 the cheap game when, when it's getting a bit worse, a cheaper uh, meal, a cheaper quantity. No, it's at that time that you have to be quality. Service, same service, even though it's empty, even though you're struggling, same smile, same music, same fun. Customer relation, taking care of everybody the same way. Quality, marketing, keep going, clean, organized. Consistent, communication, loyalty, etc. We we can be inclined today to lower the cost or to optimize, to cut staff in terms of uh, hours allocation, etc. But if your clients are doing at this time uh, of the year when it's difficult, take care of them even more than before. Pamper them. So passion and consistency equal success. To finish. Little gift from us. Again, we're providing platform for FNB and also retail. You want to know more, you contact me. It's quite easy to reach me. The idea is, as we mentioned, to a cool, powerful, and interconnected. Here I am, loyalty, Power BI, which is the dashboard, and POS and booking all together as one. And of course, cheap. So I'm offering for some of you that I two hours, complimentary hours of strategic marketing. If you want to have questions, extend the discussion. It's easy. Normally you pay, but now it's free. I only have eight places. And you can reach me at pierre at harry.wtf as write the future. And to finish, little note. The hospitality industry is a big family. This is the most important that we have. So to get through the coming turbulences, and write the future. And that is about people and friends. Thank you, guys. And you will tell that the first, for the first time in history, a French presenter in webinar finished two minutes before the end of the call. That's wonderful. We haven't noted any questions at this stage. I repeat, you can have my, uh, my email. My email is here at harry.wtf. Happy to hear from you. Reach me anytime. The next webinar is going to be about Salesforce optimization. Back to the basics. You are in our database now. You will receive an invitation. Feel free to join us. I wish all of you an enjoyable day and good luck for the future.
Thank you.